Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So today what I want to do is take apart one of these water coolers. Found it on garbage day, unfortunately it doesn't work. They come in different styles. As you can see, this one actually had a cold storage area. Um, they are a great source of scrappable material. There's always a lot of copper inside, some brass, some aluminum, some um, uh, tin shred. So what I'm going to do today is take it apart show you how to identify the material and separate it properly, and more importantly, how to maximize your profit and divert as much of this away from the landfill as possible. So here we go. The first thing I do want to point out is if I put a magnet to the box, as you can see, it does stick. So that means this entire outer shell is actually going to be going into my tin or shred pile. Tin shred right now is at a great price. It's about 10 to 13 cents a pound Canadian. So it has continued to stay high. I have seen some water coolers, unfortunately, that are 90% plastic on the outside. So I'm glad that this is going to be going into the scrap yard and not the landfill. So great outer shell there. The door, unfortunately, is really the only piece of plastic as well as the bottom here. These I cannot throw into scrap. As you can see, there is no um, magnetic force here. Some municipalities will take these in recycling. Uh, I do want to make sure there are some screws on the bottom. I want to get those out and divert as much of this away from the landfill, uh, put them into my screw bin. But this, in, unfortunately, in our municipality is actually going to go into the trash. So that's unfortunate, but at least most of this will go into the scrapping area. The other thing I do want to point out is if I turn this, these will always have a black cover or a type of cover on here. And that's because there is a compressor inside of that that is running. Any type of appliance like a water cooler, an air conditioner, a dehumidifier, some common things you find on the scrap day, any appliance that has a compressor, it is actually illegal to cut the tube to release the gas or the freon inside of it. So you do want to make sure you have someone come in here that's professional, that can do it safely and effectively. I usually store up some of my compressor units, have someone come in and do them all at once. So definitely a safer alternative and obviously legal. Um, the black box on the back or the black casing, you do want to run a magnet down it. As you can see, this entire coil apparatus is going to be um, going into my tin shred pile. There are sometimes black boxes that are connected to this or silver boxes and those you do want to take off and open up because they will have uh, some copper inside of it and usually a silver contact. This one doesn't have it on here. You also want to make sure uh, the wires, these are what connects to the compressor. You want to make sure that you cut as close to the copper uh, that you can. So if I run a magnet to that, as you can see the edges are magnetic so I don't have any copper on here. So this is going to go into my tin shred pile and this is actually three pounds worth of tin shred. So that's great. Easy to store up, put in my truck. Now that that grill is off and the compressor has been cut, here is your compressor. These are actually going for a dollar six or sorry 16 cents a pound in London, Ontario. This is 10 pounds so a dollar 60 here. But in my opinion, very well worth your time opening these and taking the copper out of uh, the inside of this. I do actually have a separate video on scrapping compressors, how to open them, remove the copper, as well as showing the weight and price that you're going to get from them. So if you're interested, go check that out. It is very well worth your time and effort. I will say for this video that very easy to do. You're just going to make sure you cut around under the weld. There is also, if I open up, there's always a black box. These black box will have a, sometimes a spool of copper and it will have one of these black boxes inside. These black boxes will either have copper in them, but they always also have a silver contact. And what I have here is just an example. Once I open it, you can see that silver dot there. That is actually silver. So I do collect these. These also come out of relay boxes on your uh, e-waste or circuit boards. And hopefully one day when I have them all, I'll hit them all with nitric acid and make myself a silver bouillon. There are, as you can see on this compressor as well, some nice wire. 
This wire is going to go into my 60% copper appliance wire. Uh, and it's going to go for actually $2.03 a pound Canadian, which is a great price. I do want to make sure I separate this. I also have, as you can see here, three copper tubes. And these copper tubes, if I left these and just cut there, I would just get number two price for this. And number two copper right now is going for $4.48. Um, but there is actually some number one on here as well. The copper that you see right here has no soldering on it, no paint. So this is actually gonna be number one copper. So this is actually gonna go for a little bit higher for $4.60 a pound. And then the rest of this right here, I will put into my um, number two copper. So any copper that has paint on it, as you can see here, same thing. Number one copper here, the soldering is gonna be number two. So an easy way to maximize your profit, you do wanna separate it because, especially if you have a lot of copper, it does uh, add up in weight and definitely price in the long run. It also has, as you can see in the back here, a nice coil. This coil, I have some really nice number one copper right here. Uh, and I do have this here. Unfortunately, if I shake this, you can hear like a sand inside of this. This does have stuff inside of them. And I actually am gonna do an upcoming video on taking these apart uh, and maximizing my profit. If I was to just cut here, this would be number one. This entire thing would be number two because it does have some soldering here, as well as some sand-like substance inside. These are very easy to uh, maximize your profit, and I am gonna show you how to do it properly in another video, uh, removing the stuff out of there and upgrading this to number one instead of number two. So, very nice piece of copper here as well. Sometimes on water coolers, you will find a beautiful copper coil on the bucket like this. Unfortunately, this did not come off of this one. This came off an other style, but I definitely wanted to show this because as you can see, some really beautiful copper. There's actually 1.9 pounds here worth of copper. Um, this unfortunately part would go into number two because it's got soldering on it. Here is some really nice number one that I would clean off. But again, water coolers, just showing you some great copper that comes out of that. Inside the rest of this panel, I am just gonna turn it quickly, remove the, I guess this would have been the cold storage bucket. This I can actually use again. I've used them to drain the oil from the compressors and then later transport it into, uh, put it into other containers. Uh, I've used it for other items as well. So this I can definitely use again. Uh, you could actually put this into your recycling. Um, but again, if you can use the stuff, why not? So nice bucket there. The rest of this shell you can start seeing is becoming more bare. And I did have to remove all of the screws. And I did want to point out the screws that I found in here. When I'm scrapping, I will usually have a magnet close by. I will collect all the screws as you can see here and I will afterwards put them into a container. These containers get very heavy. This is gonna be about 10 pounds once I'm done worth of steel. So gonna get, you know, a dollar worth there. Easy way to transport your screws as well and your nails and bolts so they don't fall out at a scrapyard. Uh, I do have, as you can see, some really nice bolts with nuts on them that came from the compressor. I can definitely use these again. There are a couple actually interesting screws that I found when I was opening the door. And I'm just gonna show these for this video. Here are my screws. If I put a magnet to these, this obviously is, has a little bit of magnetic force, but the screws do not. And that's because these screws actually have a thicker plating of nickel on them. Um, it's almost like they're stainless steel, if you will, so it prevents them from rusting. And it makes sense because they were inside of the door. You don't want screws that are rusting inside your cold storage unit. And what I do with those is I will actually put them into a container. This container is stainless steel. It's got all my stainless steel screws in it, if you will. And once I'm done filling this, I will bring this in with my stainless steel pile. Stainless steel right now is going for 77 cents a pound, uh, which is a great price. So you definitely want to check your screws. I have seen some screws that are brass as well. So you want to check and definitely want to separate and sort them. I also have a really nice power cord here. All uh, water coolers have a nice thick 
long cord, which is great. And this cord, if I bring this up to the camera, you can see that there are three individual coated strands of copper in here, as well as an outer coating. At a scrapyard, this appliance wire would go for 40% copper recovery, appliance wire. And that's because scrapyards look at copper recovery and plastic to copper ratio. Because there are an outer coating of plastic as well as the coating on the uh, inner wires, there's more plastic, less copper. So 40% copper recovery. And this is going for $1.23 a pound right now. This is uh, almost a pound, so that's great. Um, as you can see, there are some brass prongs. I do pull these off and put them into my brass. Brass right now is going for $3.85 a pound. Some people leave them on for the weight. Uh, really doesn't make a huge difference, but I do collect them separately because I do get a lot of uh, prongs and I will hopefully, once I bring all my brass in, they will definitely add up. Uh, but again, it's entirely up to you. Do want to make sure that you separate your wire. So for example, this is the inner part of it. This wire you can see is going to be my 60% copper recovery. This is going to be my 40%. And I have seen people put it all into bags and then go to one time, go to the scrapyard, start separating it then. It is very time consuming to do, so make sure you separate it as you go along. Make it easier for yourself. Um, but uh, again, here is the example of 60%, and I am just gonna cut this down here, put this into my 60. The rest of this, I'm not gonna bother trying to pull it out. This will be my 40% as well as this. So great appliance wire there as well. Here is my shell. I do have to just quickly remove the rest of this. Uh, you do want to make sure, if I turn this, the last couple screws were hidden under stickers. So you do want to make sure you check everywhere for your screws. Um, they do hide them sometimes, as you can see. Just hopefully you can see that last couple screws that I need to take off. Some people use a drill to take the screws off. I don't. Um, I actually just enjoy using a screwdriver, therapeutic in my opinion. Um, but again, entirely up to you. So I'm just gonna open this up a little bit now. Make sure I put my safety glass on. Here is a little bit of plastic as well that's gonna go in the garbage. There is my bucket, if you will. I got one more screw to remove now that I can see through here. Easier to handle. Just gonna remove this shell. Hopefully you can see that. But, you know, there are definitely some screws that are hidden along the way. So you gotta be patient to make sure you get all of them. Um, and again, once this bucket is removed, it'd be easier to do. There is some styrofoam. I can smell this one has been cleaned with vinegar. Great way to clean your water safely. Take this. Uh, and I'm just gonna actually pull this, put safety glass on, get some muscle power, cut these wires here. There's gonna be wires that are connected to the box, as well as my hose. There are sometimes better idea too to make sure you drain these. Okay. Now, the water system, as you can see, lots of wires hanging from it. There is this hose that goes all the way up here. As you can see, this is painted. And I definitely want to make sure with this, I also run a magnet to this to make sure that it is not copper. So this is actually all the way up. This is gonna be copper. Now this is painted copper, so this is gonna go into my number two. And if I take a file, just to show you. There you go. There is my painted copper tube. So you wanna make sure you get all of this copper. It's gonna go all the way up to this. Uh, I've seen some people accidentally think that that's plastic and throw it out, so be careful of that. But because it is painted, it will be number two copper. Um, the rest of this box, I have seen stainless steel ones, but this one, as you can see, I put a magnet to it, it sticks. So the rest of this, this is gonna be stainless steel. 
okay? It does not stick, as you can see. Um, and this tube I will remove, put into my stainless steel. Um, but the rest of this box is going to go into my tin shred pile. And this is actually very heavy. Uh, I do have a little bit of foam that I do need to take off, and I'm not gonna do that right now, but it's just taped on. I'm gonna use a knife and cut it. The, unfortunately, this is gonna be garbage. Um, a little bit of plastic here that I can actually leave on, throw into my tin shred pile. I do wanna quickly look at this box. It's got one screw on it, just to hopefully show you that this is gonna have my relay box. And I know it's gonna because I can see the wires coming off of it right now. Inside of here is my circuit board. Okay, just gonna open this up. The nice thing, this box is gonna be tin shred. Just gonna open it, fold it out for you. Okay, so nice wire again. That box right there, as you can see, uh, this is gonna have that silver contact in it, uh, as well as a small strip of copper. The rest, once I take that off and cut off all of this strand of wire, that's gonna go into my 60%. This circuit board, I'm gonna throw into e-waste. I'll get five to six cents a pound for it. It's definitely not a pound, but a circuit board's another great thing to store up and bring in because better than going to the landfill and they are definitely worth money at a scrapyard. So the rest of this box, I have, this is very heavy actually. I've probably got six to seven pounds worth of tin here. A great score. I do have an on and on switch that has a little bit of copper inside of it and some wire. I am gonna make sure I remove that. But a very good item to scrap. As I said, a lot of tin here, uh, better than the other style. Unfortunately, you can just imagine the other styles, these were con uh, completely plastic, so that's great that I can divert this whole thing. Unfortunately, a little bit of plastic waste, but all in all, probably a good 10 pounds to 12 pounds worth of tin shred just from the shell and the back. I've got a great compressor. If I want, I can get $1.60 for this, but definitely better to get that copper out, so again, Go check out that video on how to scrap compressors. Um, so great copper there, some great appliance wire, a little bit of silver, and again, another appliance diverted from the landfill. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment down below, like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tin Man out.